Are we becoming hikikomori? So hikikomori is a ja- Japanese. Well, it was a Japanese thing where like people just stay online all the time. But let's see, we're all becoming online all the time. Hikikomori is a form of severe social withdrawal characterized by adolescents and young adults who become recluses in their parents' homes, unable to work or go to school for months or years. Mika LeFay's video, Hikikomori, The Haunting Echoes of Eugenics in Japan, stares deeply into the abyss of ableism in Japan, examining the genocidal policies of the Japanese government Genocidal? against disabled people. Wait, and how what? Contributed to a phenomenon of often neurodivergent shut-in. S- sorry, sorry, sorry. Like, that took me, that took me by surprise, bro. Wait, they, they're getting rid of people with... The genocidal policies of the Japanese. 1984, the, the physician shall apply to the metropolitan. He could have eugenic operations to find the eugenic operation is necessary for the sake of public interest in order to prevent hereditary transmissions of the disease. In a case where the results of the examination evidently shows the disease enumerated in the annex list, Japanese government against. Article 20 regarding the spouse person having parental power, person under obligation, blah, 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 blah. Article 21, where mayor, the city, a headman, town, villager, became the person under blah, 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 la, la, la. With respect to the person suffering from psycho, psych, psychopathy, psych, psychopathy or mental retardation, other than the hereditary ones enumerated in item one or two, annex list. This may apply to the, I don't prefer, blah, 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 blah. All right. So what I'm guessing is if you have like some type of mental retardation, they basically will euthanize you so you don't spread re- uh, mental retardation uh, like in the gene pool and it spreads across Japan. This is some fucked up shit. Disabled people and how they've contributed to a phenomenon of often neurodivergent shut-ins who struggle to find work and social acceptance. LaFay also critiques the mainstream narrative of hikikomori being a uniquely Eastern phenomenon attributable to a generic Japanese collectivism, a type of Orientalist discourse on the topic which deflects our attention away from its... I think that's the stupidest shit I've ever heard and people are just blaming Japan for some shit that's just in human nature. Parallels in Western societies. Yeah. In truth, hikikomori are global. Yeah. In America, we've got a phenomenon called disconnected youth, which represents a youth. version of the same thing. A paper from the Russell Sage Foundation finds that the longer they didn't know better since 19. No, they don't know better, but it seems like they still slowly, slowly, slowly still can't figure it out. 85 show that over time. You young- know why? Because they're too damn old. They need to be kicked out. Old people that are over the age of like 60 should not be in politics, bro. Move them out. Pass it down to somebody younger, bro, because we shouldn't be having 70, 80, 90 year old people sitting in office because they don't fucking know the front of their hand from the back of their ass. Young men have experienced. Bro, how, how you how you live in 2023? You don't know how to use a cell phone. You don't know how to check your email. Most of the things we do is online or digital. So if we have an old person that doesn't know how to use it and it's been out for what, 15, 20 years, they need to go. Point blank. Rate of being period. Disconnected and young women have experienced. Let them retire. Let them go have fun. Almost 10% of all men ages 20 to 24 and 13% of all women were not working, actively seeking work or in school. Now, it's not hard to imagine for me why so many young people would want to drop out. That is school sucks. increasingly pervasive and heavy. Duh. Education Data Initiative finds that the average public university student borrows $32,637 to attain a bachelor's degree. You know, maybe I'm out of touch, but 32 k for four years is not that bad. But that's still a lot of fucking money. <laughs> and of course, 32 k is crazy. Yeah. America finds that within middle income families, nearly three quarters, 71%, report cutting back on restaurant slash takeout meals, up from 57% in March. Nearly the same amount, 69%, say they plan to been a business, 100%. technology instead of upgrading, up from 44% in March. And about half, 49%, are planning to budget or cut back on groceries. Damn, groceries? In March. Bro, okay, look, fast food decline, Okay, grocery decline, that's fucking terrible because fast food is a luxury. Ordering online is a luxury. Getting groceries is something I feel like it should be standard for people to go to the grocery store. 
Like that should be a standard. If you're not farming, you go to the grocery store, you go to the farmer's market, right? That should be a standard. And whenever people are cutting back on the standard, that means you have definitely some huge cultural or uh, social fucking issues you need to solve where people aren't going to the grocery store so to sucks. get groceries. And this makes paying off debt even more at this, ephemeral. At this point, people are going to start farming in their in their window seals because nobody has far, and nobody has land. Everybody has an apartment. The rent's going high as fuck in the apartment. You need to cut back on food. You better go get a window seal thing and start growing some potatoes or something. It's hard enough to pay rent. Those are getting expensive in the loans. states. That's that terrible. obviously will lead to doubt as to whether the education with a grain of salt process when we had the pandemic. Pandemic. The thing is, the pandemic was actually a clean slate, right? The pandemic was a clean slate for everything. And I think we could really see where things are getting messed up in like the next uh, five years. I think the two to five years after the pandemic is when you can really say, OK, what's good? What's bad? What needs to be taken back? Because we had essential workers, right? So basically people with bullshit jobs, they didn't have to go to work because they were non-essential, right? Um, we found out fast food employees are essential because a lot of people like to eat fast food, right? But a lot of fast food workers quit. Um, UBI, there's a lot of talk about UBI. Now, a lot of people think uh, UBI is a bad thing, and a lot of people think uh, it's very important. I'm somewhere in the middle where I think UBI should definitely be given out, but you should expect when UBI is given out that people are going to quit. People are, some people are going to stay at home and play video games all day. That is what's going to happen when UBI happens. So UBI, people don't know, it's basically the government's going to pay you just for existing because we have a surplus amount of goods. Uh, I don't think we're at the point where we have a surplus amount of goods, but we have a surplus amount of people that don't really do anything anyways, which I think is causing more of a congestion in our economic status in general and just normal day of life. So like perfect example, which I've heard recently, it's like, uh, say you work in a, a big business and you want to move your computer from one room to another. Well, you can't just do that. You have to fill out a form. People have to drive to the building, take the computer apart, reassemble it, sign off on it, and then you can move into that new cubicle or whatever, right? I've just heard that. I don't know if that's true. But if that example is true, basically you have to pay people to drive out there, wasting natural resources like gasoline so they could come and move a fucking computer when somebody else could have did it that's already there. In that situation but because we don't want people to just do stuff we added uh we added more checks and balances so some people could say yes some people can say no if it's not necessary or if it is necessary but we've added so many checks and balances to where it's almost it's almost no point in having a check and balance because the checks and balances cost resources that are not uh, infinite they are finite resources gasoline is a finite resource having people drive to go do some shit that is a finite resource which cannot be established in the next four million years, right? It's, work. it's crazy. It's definitely crazy. And it's something I don't think a lot of old people give a fuck to think about. And a lot of young people are too dumb to figure it out themselves or they're working themselves to death so they can't figure it out. Like everybody knows everything is messed up, but nobody knows why everything is messed up. Because nobody has enough free time to sit back and figure it out. The pandemic was the perfect time for people to figure out why shit wasn't working, right? Everybody was working like normal and then everybody had to stop. The pandemic was amazing when it comes down to figuring out what's wrong with the country and what's wrong with the world. Because everything that stopped and everything that kept going, we all could watch and see with our own eyes. And whether you decided to do something about it or not, I don't know whether you could do something about it or not, that's out of your control. But the pandemic was perfect because now we got the next five years to see what's wrong and what we can fix and how to fix it so it doesn't happen again. Parker. Human greed comes into play somewhere. A hundred percent here. A hundred percent. But the thing is, human greed can only get you so far because when everybody is uh, angry, they usually start killing people with power. Right. French Revolution, American Revolution, 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 Civil War, blah, blah, blah. Right. When shit gets crazy, people start killing people because they don't like where they're at. And then for some reason, they they put somebody else in charge that ends up doing the same thing many years later. Focus on it's one crazy. process. My hands have emerged from under the table. That is a key aspect of our financial systems globally, whether they be in America or Japan, that inevitably leads to this kind of social discontent that eventually leads to complete withdrawal. That's true. Before we talk about either people will will withdraw or they get angry and they break some stuff. Because not everybody wants to be 
implicit in the world design of work until you're 60 or work until you're 70 because they're moving to retirement age because there's so many old people and there's not enough young people. About that, however, we should talk about a young man named Luca. Kaneshiro. Ali Conti's 2019 New York Magazine article, When Going Outside is Prison, The World of American Hikikomori, centers on the story of a disconnected 21-year-old named Luca. Luca Donchich. lives with his parents outside of Charlotte, Donchich. North Carolina, Ooh, though he might as well splash. live anywhere. That's because the only Charlotte, North Carolina? one year old leaves his there. room is to buy camels, which he smokes in his garage. Mostly, he spends his time in his room, posting on Reddit, gaming, and watching anime. Well, instead of doing that shit, why don't you watch me? I'm a better content creator than all that other shit. He sleeps all day, wakes up at 6 in the evening, and pops Benadryl around 9 in the morning so he can go back to sleep. He's been reliving the same exact day, almost every day, for close to a decade. That fucking sucks. All of this, he told me over Reddit DMs, started at age 12. That sucks. He'd get so anxious in class that he'd forget how to swallow, so his mom let him take online classes instead. Eventually, he dropped out of online high school, too. Online at high 15, school is crazy. He discovered Welcome to the NHK an anime about a broadcasting company's conspiracy to manufacture a generation of shut-ins, which provided Luca with a term that he felt gave a philosophical justification for the way he lives his life. And that's totally understandable because the person that made the anime probably felt the same shit. Yeah, it makes sense. Philosophy doesn't just come out of nowhere. Somebody thinks of it and then they say it out loud and other people are like, hmm, I understand and I agree with that. That is how philosophy is created. So to say that this isn't true philosophy would be some bullshit because all philosophy at the end of the day, if you use that logic, is bullshit. Literally, someone said, man, I don't think we should work seven days a week. Maybe we should work five days a week and have two days off and call it a weekend. And everybody was like, that's a great idea. That's just how shit works, bro. <laughs> the world that's just how it works. Literally, we could have we could literally if we all just agree to change shit, we can literally change shit overnight. If everybody agreed, hey, we should do it this way, literally it would change overnight, bro. It literally would if everybody agreed like that. But not everybody agrees like that because we have human greed and we have checks and balances. Yeah, you can't just change shit. You got to ask for permission and then someone with authority looks over it and they say yes or no. And then somebody else with more authority than them say yes or no. So if you want to change some shit, you got to have somebody already at the top that wants to change it. But even if the person at the top wants to change it, they still got two or three people before it gets to their desk. That's why shit does not change, because checks and balances. I get a job. I quit school and decided to go on a personal rebellion. He told me. I learned of the term hatukamori and realized that was me and that was what I am. It is what it is. Examining Luca's account. Of if that's what you are, that's what you are. Journey, we can see a few. I'm not going to sit here and say hikikomori is a bad thing because hikikomori comes from something. And if something makes you feel this way, then the issue isn't your lifestyle of hikikomori. The issue is what made you hikikomori. Was it your anxiety? Was it social pressure? Was it the medication? Maybe the medication was bad. Maybe you need a different pill, right? Maybe it was your parents' fault that you're hikikomori because she took you out of normal school and put you in online school. Maybe it's online school's fault because they didn't integrate you perfectly into online school, so you dropped out of online school, right? There's more issues than just, oh, he's a hikikomori, he's a bad person. Same thing I would say with drug addicts. Oh, he does crack, he's a bad person. It's not that he does crack, he's a bad person. Something made him choose that shit. Something made him want to get into drugs, right? It's not the drug's fault, it's the drug's that just exists and then people took them or you were forced to take them or people encourage you to take them, whatever. The issue, the drugs are gonna be there just like guns are gonna be there. Everything's gonna be there, alcohol's gonna be here. Like, remember when we tried to get rid of alcohol? We had prohibition and guess what happened? People started serving alcohol underground. It's gonna exist. Crime, the dark side of humanity is always gonna exist. And if you choose to ignore it, that doesn't make it go away. Cause you blame the crackheads, doesn't mean there's someone gonna serve crack. You, you blame the, the result. You never blame the source because the source usually has a lot of power and a lot of money. And if you talk about the source being a problem, you disappear. Causes usually, for these issues. usually. Sometimes you don't. Luca experienced significant social anxiety as a child. 
Now, we don't know the source of that condition for him, but we can register that as a neuroatypical problem, meaning a type of extraordinary neurological situation or mm -hmm. issue or state of being. Mm -hmm. In particular, an extraordinary issue with his mental health that made it near impossible for him to We do not advise doing him. armchair diagnosis of strangers, 100%. Like, that's why I, as much as I love talking to my community and trying to figure you, you guys out and trying to help you with your issues, whether it's social anxiety or eating disorders or you feel uncomfortable around other people. Right. I can only do so much as an armchair therapist. And that's why I want to actually go into therapy for my degree to help you guys out. Like back in the day, I wanted to save the world and like help as many people as I can. And I've set my goals back. I no longer really care about the outside world. I just care about the people on my ship. Right. So this is why I do want to go into therapy. It's for you guys. So I can actually help you guys out. Second, we know also, if this is your first time watching me and watch my video, go ahead and subscribe. We might check out more stuff like this. He has antagonism towards school and work as concepts that are forced on people. Relatable enough. And this is corroborated when later on in the story he tells. Hi, YouTube. <laughs> I refuse to work for eight dollars at Taco Bell and be another's. Life yeah. When I am my own God. He also tells her. There's no asshole boss in my room standing at my door going, wash those walls for six hours. Then you can take a 15 minute break by laying in your bed. Here we can see That's that Luca has a consciousness That's of true. the soul crushing nature of jobs that are most available to people in his situation. Yeah, because if you want a high paying job, you either have to already have the experience, which how the fuck are you going to have experience at a high paying job and you're just a college graduate or you be rich. <laughs> That's it. Either you get, either you have the experience or you're rich. Like damn near. That's literally it. Like you can, and, 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 and honestly, this is going to be the realest shit I probably ever fucking said. Your degree is fucking useless, but it's useful at the same time, bro. Your degree is useful for getting people to look at you, but it's not useful to get your foot in the door to get your foot in the door. You have to already know somebody. It's who you know, not what you know. That is the truth. So does the degree matter? Yes. But at the same time, no. You know, if you're if you're fluent in whatever you're trying to get your degree in. So if you're going to class, this is what I recommend to you. It's not great advice at all. And it is illegal and it might get you in trouble. But to succeed in life, you have to cheat. If you're not willing to cheat, someone else is and they will take the position and you won't. That is the facts of life. So. This is what you should do if you're proficient in whatever you are doing, whatever your proficiency is, whatever you're good at and you're in school for it. Find some motherfucker on Fiverr to Photoshop your fucking degree. And then go into the field and figure it the fuck out. Because there's been several. Have you seen the movie Catch Me If You Can? That motherfucker was an airline pilot. He ain't never went to pilot school. This motherfucker had every job in the book. And he was just running from John and all the whole time. And that shit is real because it doesn't matter. The degree doesn't matter. It's how you act and who you know. If you put on a suit and you walk into McDonald's with a clipboard and you ask for one thing on the menu and you start eating and you start doing some shit on the clipboard, you, even if you're playing fucking stick figures, they will look at you and think this is a fast food reviewer. Maybe we should clean it up. Maybe we should bring him something else. Maybe we should be nicer, right? Perception is reality. Reality is not reality. What people think you are is how you are. Whether you agree with it, whether you like it. There are people, I'm saying the realest shit in the world. Some people might watch me and say, this is the stupidest shit I've ever heard. And there's somebody else that's gonna watch me and say, yeah, this is the realest shit I've ever heard. And somebody's gonna come in, they're gonna see me, you're gonna say, he's black, he doesn't know shit and leave. Right? That is life. That is the perceptions of life. And that's how life works. But if you say shit long enough and if you say shit loud enough, you eventually get an audience. So no matter how many times I see the viewer count go down, I'm just going to keep saying my shit until somebody listens. And some people are listening because there's five right here. It was 10. Now it's five. Maybe it'll go to one. Maybe it'll go to three. Maybe it'll go to 20. Maybe it'll go to 100 next week. But we don't know. I don't fucking care. I'm already rich. So I'm going to sit here and talk my bullshit. Let's go. There we can see that Hikikomori as a concept serves as a way for Luca in his eyes to regain autonomy from a world that he feels is taking it away from people. At the end, he tells Conti, It's the opposite of a prison. Thanks for the advice. It's no problem. <laughs> There's no one here but me. I can do whatever 
whenever. This is me. This is me. I can do whatever I want whenever I want. I am a hikikomori. But the thing is, I'm able to turn it off. I have no issues going outside. I have no issues going to the gym. I have a beautiful woman sitting in my living room waiting for me to finish this so I can go hang out with her, right? You can be a hikikomori and still be successful. Hikikomori does not mean loser. It's synonymous with the word loser. You could be a hikikomori and be successful, bro. I think everybody could be successful. No matter what you do, no matter what it is, you can be successful in it if you try hard enough. And it sounds like bullshit, and I agree, it does sound like bullshit, but if you cheat, you know people, you make friends, you work online, you can fucking do it. You're in Discord all the time, right? If you're in Discord all the time, you know people in Discord. They might have some skills that you don't have, but if you have the power of money, their skills become your skills, and that helps you get whatever you're trying to get to. Now, if you don't have money, you got to do the grunt work. I did the grunt work for many years. I've been doing YouTube for 12 years before I finally had five people just sit down and listen to me just talk, right? We'll see what happens 12 years from now. Maybe I'll have thousands of people or maybe I'll be a crazy homeless guy, right? But you enjoy the ride and you think about the future. And if you want to chase your dreams, if you really want to chase your dreams, you'll probably accomplish it or you'll die trying. I personally would have been happy dying to try and accomplish this shit, what I'm doing now. If I died before I got here, I would be mad that I didn't make it, but at least I tried. Versus another timeline of me right now is thinking, damn, I wish I was doing what I'm doing now. Damn, I wish I could stream and just hang out. Damn, I wish I was in another country. Damn, I wish I had a motorcycle. Damn, I wish I had clothes. Damn, I wish I had viewers. Damn, I wish. I don't live in I wish. I am what I am. And it's not just me. A lot of people think, oh, you did it because just no, I have I've had help. I have had help to get to where I'm at. And a lot of people act like they're ashamed to say that they have help. And it's true. We multiverses now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. multiverse theory. I think I think multiverse theory is real. And I, I and I hope it's not real because that means there's a timeline where I fucking suck. But there is a timeline where I'm more successful than I am now. And that's the timeline I'm, I'm aiming for, baby. The big time. We all want to make it to the big time until we make it. And then it sucks. But yeah, we'll see what happens in the next couple of years, bro. Going outside is a prison, but this room, this room is clarity. So you have me in the first half. Going outside is not a prison. It's a, I think everywhere you go is a prison and it's up to you whether you're the warden or the prisoner. Mika it's just you, but white. I recommend you watch. Exactly. Maybe multiverse theory. Maybe it's parallel universe theory. Maybe I am Majestic Pugson. Maybe I'm Vader Shader. Maybe, maybe we are all one and the same. Who knows? Means the issue of mental illness as essential to the rise of hikikomori in Japan. How eugenics policies from its fascist government paved the way for the ostracization of disabled people, including neurodivergent you are me, bro. to the point of their I don't doubt it. To I don't isolation. doubt it. Now, A lot I of people laugh at that. I don't doubt it. If you're still watching this video, you're probably me. I'm probably you. Maybe. There's similarities. There's a reason why you're still watching this fucking video. I've been talking for like 30 minutes. We're only six minutes into this 21 minute video. I'd like to talk about how eugenics continues to manifest itself today in ways that are far more far reaching than just social stigma. And this being in the rest of the world. But in particular, we'll talk about the US. Present day US policy exemplifies how liberal democracy, quote unquote, works hand in hand with fascism. I like how you now, said that. That's something we touched on in our video about public libraries. In that video, we looked at Carl Vitae's book, The Capital Order, how economists invented austerity and paved the way to fascism. Really? In on how that's British an interesting title. Italian fascism fostered similar environments for austerity to thrive. Now, austerity is obviously one of the things that makes life strict help. economic policies that a government imposes to control growing public debt defined by increased fragility, either raising taxes to fund spending, raising taxes while introducing a budget cut or lowering taxes and government spending for disabled mm, people at the very least, because it makes life hell for everybody. Yeah. Austerity measures, which continue to be propped up by American politicians, directly destroy or undercut programs that disabled people rely on. And I do not agree with this whatsoever. We need to help the disabled because if you're willing to just cut off the weakest members of your society, who else are you willing to cut off? First, we're cutting off disabled people. Next, we're cutting disabled veterans. 
Next, we're cutting off able-bodied veterans. They're able-bodied. They should be working. They saw people die in Iraq. Who gives a fuck? Right? And then it goes on and on and on, right? And then, hey, we're not treating veterans right. Nobody wants to join the military because veterans aren't getting treated right. Oh, well, they don't want to join? Well, let's force them. Draft. Everybody has to join. Oh, the people don't like it? Fuck it. They got to join anyway. What are you going to do? Revolt? Maybe they will. Who knows? For example, Social Security, the U.S. government program that is in charge of... Bro, benefits. if you cut Social Security, a whole bunch of old people going to be mad as shit. It's for disabled people. <laughs> a whole bunch of old people going to be violence. mad as shit. That's one of many agencies that has been gutted over the years, yeah. especially since the economic recession, but in total because of austerity. Shout out to Ronald Reagan. From journalist Mark... Ronald Reagan fucked up a lot of shit, bro. And a lot of people just be like, yeah, Reaganomics. Reaganomics fucked up a lot of shit, bro. Miller and it wasn't just Reaganomics. Like, Ronald Reagan himself fucked the country pretty fucking badly. And a lot of people just love him because he's old and... Ah, uh, it's just like my uncle. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the SSA Your has uncle's a piece of shit too. years of cuts to its administrative budget imposed by Congress just as the aging of the U.S. population has meant an exploding workload. The number of beneficiaries has jumped 21% since 2010, yet its operating budget shrank 17%, adjusted for inflation. Oh boy, enrollment. that's going to be interesting. Social security uh, and disability policy. At it's going to be an interesting next 30, 40 years, I'll tell you that. Center on budget and policy. And this is why I'm on YouTube talking my shit, because eventually your boy might not be getting some uh, disability checks. So, you know, you got to gotta go ahead and get on a YouTube train, baby. Priority. Even YouTube ain't safe. Staffing has fallen by 13% and is now at its lowest level in 25 years. When you got resources for schools, for example, you put tremendous pressure on students and staff alike just to get through the year, let alone to succeed in an increasingly hostile, expensive environment. When social safety nets are cut, more and more people with disabilities and mental health issues will fall through. And then what happens? The people that are inside now collecting checks soon can't stay inside anymore. Now they're outside and they're crazy. Guess what happens? They get a gun because it's super easy to get a gun in America. And then what happens? People die. Oh shit. Who could have saw this coming? This who includes kids like saw Luca and his mother who is described as another home. This is why I say, man, shout out to the, the crazy people. Stay your crazy ass inside and watch VTubers all day. We do not need you in the streets going crazy, bro. Person. Stay your ass inside and watch the girl go, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, la, 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 la. That's why I don't make fun of the fucking the, the, the uh, unicorns. Let them motherfuckers have that shit. Because if they are crazy online, imagine what happens when they crazy outside. And her disability Fuck checks them. are keep them inside. Keep them afloat. Conti notes that Luca hopes that the government will develop a treatment plan for American hikikomori as well as social programs to help support them as they transition into the working world. They're not. They're, they could try, but I don't think they will. The government has other plans. <laughs> hey, there it is. All right, I'm gonna cut this one short because I got shit to do. We can watch the rest of this video later, but I love this video. Elliot Sang, bro, this is a great video. We're gonna watch more of this maybe tomorrow. Somebody remind me. So this is the most played. So it gets real crazy later on, but I got stuff to do. So let's go ahead and end this here. Yeah, it also depends on the individual. That is true.